welcome you if you are watching us online. Hey, we're so glad wait, where are we to at? have Over here. you as well. Pump fake, back to here. I like that. Okay, go to the wide. I was wide like smiling awkwardly because wave. I was like, what do I hey. do? Where do I smile? I'm, I'm behind you. Love you, live stream. Yes, we love you. We're so we glad that you're you at church with us today. We're going to recap from Wednesday, but I just want to tell you something really quick because this is basically more issues because the church at Corinth, that's why everything's decorated like this, um, really had a lot of the same issues that we have. Um, but here's the thing that I want to tell you, and we, we said this in intern devotion, and we've just kind of been saying it all morning. Like the deeper the issues, the deeper you have to go with God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we all come into the family of God with different baggage and different things going on in our life. But if you want to overcome those things, you have to be really serious about your relationship with God. You've got to really go for it. You will never drown in the things of God. Right. Right. Life will never get worse for you going all the way with God. That's a lie that the enemy would try to sell you that would keep you at a distance. And you can't, it's like the guy that sits on the edge of the pool and is like so upset that he's not in the water, but is unwilling to jump in. Like all the action is in the deep end, so to speak. No one's wanting to play around in the kiddie pool. So when it comes to your relationship with God, you want to think about it that way. And in this first paragraph, we emphasize this week that the mindset that these believers had before they were Christians, they brought those same same feelings. That's your blank there. Everyone say same feelings. Same feelings. What that means is if we don't renew our mind, if we don't change the way we think, we'll bring in the same attitudes and nonsense from the world into the church. And the church doesn't function like the world. The world doesn't function like the church. Even at your age right now, you have to renew your mind to what God's word says about your life. See, feelings aren't facts. Some of you guys need to write that down because you act as though like you treat your feelings as if they're like the final authority in life and they're not. Feelings are not facts. Feelings are simply indicators of what's going on in your mind. Mm -hmm. So if you feel depressed, you're thinking depressing thoughts. Mm -hmm. If you feel happy, you're feeling happy thoughts. If you're feeling loved, you're thinking love thoughts. Like your feelings are not just this thing that's like not connected anywhere else in your life. Right. Your feelings are attached to your thinking. So when you feel bad, that's like an indicator like, okay, I need to do something. I'm thinking wrong. I need to change the way that I think. And so when it comes to life in general, that's what these five points were all about. Hey, don't think like the world thinks about these things. So like, let's use your memory and, and kind of your perspective as we unpack these. Like, tell me if you were here on Wednesday night, like what were you thinking about? Number one is where you go, I follow. So 1 Corinthians 11, 1 says, Paul said, you should follow my example just as I follow Christ. Hebrews 6, 12 instructs the church to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. And in Matthew 4, 19, Jesus said to follow me. So I'll give you those blanks in, a, in just a second. But in reading those verses, tell me what your takeaway was when it comes to number one, where you go, I follow. What does that mean to you? Someone raise your hand and tell me. You always follow them. Who do you follow? Jesus. Very good. Who else? So like everywhere you go, Jesus will follow you. Like he'll always be with you. It's good. He is an ever present help. So good. Yes, yes. city, did you have one? Like you don't need to go your own way. You need to go in the correct path. So good. Mm, that's good. So good. The world's going to tell you like, just do you yeah. go whatever way. Like if it feels right, it is right. That's not true. According to the word of God, there's one way for you and one way only and it's not like made to order. Okay, anyone else on that one? Where you go, I follow. How many of you guys like playing follow the leader? Do you guys remember that game? Only a couple of you, right? Why? Because you're like, I wanna do my own thing. Look at the definition of the word follow. It says to accept the guidance, command, or leadership of which means you have to choose. Have you guys ever played Simon Says? So what's the whole premise of that game? 
You only do what Simon says, right? But what about when they trick you and they say something and you do it and you put your hand on top of your head and they're like, nope, Simon didn't say it. You're out. Right? It's the same way. We do what the Word says to do. So um, I just want to encourage you guys. I was listening. Um, I believe it was Sister Nancy Dufresne. She said, uh, facts are subject to change. Right, but the truth of God's word will never change. Your, your emotions are the same way. She she was talking about it in the context of there may be something in your life that's a fact. Maybe you know she said when you sit down to pay your bills, it may be a fact that you have a certain amount of money in your account, but that is subject to change. You know your feelings are the same way. That may be a fact that you feel this way or you truly were left out, but you know what? If you make the truth of God's word the final authority in your life, then you won't experience the emotional roller coaster that many of your friends go through. Why? Because you have the stability of the truth of God's word. Does that make sense? So, um, first statement there underneath where you go, I follow. Who are you following and whose example are you looking to? Tell me some people that people your age are following right now? Give me some names. Mason, like at school. Okay. Like, they're just like um, dating girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. School. Yeah. Okay. At City? Um, social media influencers. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. My brothers would follow me. Yeah, mm -hmm. your brothers follow you. Okay. Younger siblings. Good answer. Mm -hmm. Good answer if you're firstborn. Who else? Who are people following these days, guys? Popularity. Popularity. Mm-hmm. Ain't none of y'all popular. Just kidding. <laughs> Don't do it. It's a trick. Doesn't a even trap. matter. It doesn't matter at all. And even like if you're in the popular crowd, there's probably somewhere else that's more popular. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. Anyone else? Who else? Who are people following? One of my friends, when I was in middle school, she was a lot older than me. I think I said, I, yeah, Jenna. Their parents' example. Yeah, that's such. Great that's answer. a great one. That's great a great answer. one. If your parents are following the Lord, it's a great one. She literally, she dyed her hair like so many different colors. It was purple at one point. She was following Madonna. That was a long time ago. Anyone else? All right, let's look at this next statement. Why would you follow someone who is headed somewhere you would never want to go? That doesn't make any sense, right? So we have to be really selective and be aware of who we're looking to to tell us what is cool or what isn't cool or what is right or what is wrong. You know, like when, when Pastor Charity asked the question, you know, what does that mean to you? Where you go, I follow. To me, it's like, we have the same destination, right? Like, I'll follow you there. What does that yeah. mean? We're both going to Chili's. We have the same destination. Yeah. Amen? So ultimately, if they're headed somewhere different with their life that's not in the direction of the word, there's no reason to follow that example. Like, if I want to go or I would like to go to Chili's and you would like to go to Dickie's, then we're, gonna, we're not going to be able to follow each other because we're going two different places, right? So sometimes, I want to just interject this, sometimes you'll follow people, but you're not really paying attention to what their destination is. Good. And when you're following them, you're, you're basically determining that you will arrive at the same place they arrive. That's why we say it's so important who you follow. You need to know, listen, I know where this kind of behavior leads to. So I know what that person's destination is. So I'm not going to follow them because I don't want that to be my destination. Then like the Bible says, follow those who through faith and patience inherit the promises right? So we look at leaders like pastors Dean and Kathy who are inheriting the promises of long life, of health, of joy, of peace, of financial stability, all these wonderful things. You can say, you know what? I want the destination that they have. So I'm going to do what they do. Does that make sense? So when you follow the father, you go his way, not your way. You guys already kind of said that. So you have to be willing to give up your way. You have to be willing to give up stubbornness and pride. The next statement says, when you follow your leaders, you let them see things in your life that you don't see. You know, I had a young adult, so like in a season older than you guys and even older than high school, like already out of high school, young adults, you know, come up to, hey, I just wanted you to be in the ring with me. Like um, I'm crushing on this person. Well, I know this person and I know because this person has told me who they're crushing on that it's not that person. You know what I'm saying? And so because they asked me, I was like, honestly, let it go. It's a no go. Because I knew that person wasn't their type. It was a no go. So she could have continued to pray and like, you know, bat her eyes or whatever. 
it was a no-go. I could see something. So other person, I'm crushing on this person. I'm like, I know what's going on with that person behind closed doors. That's a no-go. Because they're going through the motions, but there's like a whole lot of stuff in the closet. That's a no-go. Right? And that doesn't mean everybody's disqualified. This is just a couple of examples to show you that there are people that can see things yeah. that you can't see. So like a season ahead of you, like if I'm on the third story, I can see more than you can see on the single story. Right. But if you're so unwilling to let anybody else's perspective be involved in your world, you could walk into things blindly, unwilling to accept things and then end up getting hurt. Right. And so in these examples, when somebody is ahead of you in leadership in a season, they can look at your life and say, mm, cause they know stuff. Like we've been around the block, not like Jenny around the block, but like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Is it from the block? I don't know. <sighs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that she and A-Rod broke up mm -hmm. and her kids really liked him and they had really seen him as a stepdad. And now she's uh, going back with just... Ben and that's like 17 years ago. And it's like, <laughs> what's going on? Are before you gonna these, settle down these and get married? Children You've of been the Lord engaged. were born. Yeah, they don't know. That's why I'm not even looking at them. They don't even them. know Ben. I'm looking past them to my own reflective state. Let me ask you guys a question. If you end up at a wrong destination because you followed the wrong person. Whose fault is that? Right? It's, if, if that's us, it's our fault. So what that means is you have a, you have a big responsibility to determine where your destination is. Because yeah. where you end up in life, that's on you. Mm -hmm. It's not like, well, God should have sent me a better friend or God should have, God should have. No, it's never God's fault. That's right. It's our responsibility to take responsibility for our life. If you guys will do that, you'll experience this amazing life. You know, we preach about it all the time. And I want to make sure you know this morning, it is 100% attainable for every single person under the sound of my voice. Yeah, that's right. A good life, an amazing mm -hmm. life. Now, statistically, the Word of God tells us that some people won't choose it, but that doesn't have to be you. Yeah. God does not predetermine that. You determine that based on your choices. Amen. Amen. I was thinking of a positive example. When Pastor Greg graduated from high school and went to college and was an intern, you know, John George saw things in him that he didn't see in himself. And he literally was like, you're going to lead the praise and worship. Well, Pastor Greg had never led the praise and worship before. You're going to play the piano. He had never played the piano before. So he's like, you're going to learn it. Like, and then when he was in worship school, his voice teacher, we all had to sing like solos at different points. He was a year ahead of me. He wasn't in my class, but in his class, our voice teacher was like, Greg, you have an incredible voice voice he never sang before. With John George, he only played instruments. If you will submit yourself, leaders can help you because sometimes there's things in you and you're like, oh, is that really God? Like, is that really? Like, as pastors, he will help us to see things for you. You know, like I sat down with somebody recently and they're like, you know, because you're either called to a full-time ministry capacity or like um, a marketplace capacity. And if you are called to be in the marketplace, you need to know what that looks like. You need to know what that is. So I was sitting down with this person and they're like, I really feel like I'm going to go to college. And like, I really feel like it's business. And I'm like, okay, well, what kind of business? Cause like, you're not just going to go get a general business degree. That means pretty much nothing. Like what you, there has to be something more than that. Like, are you going to be in the food industry? Are you going to be a restaurant? Are you going to be in marketing? Are like you got God specific, like he's detailed. So if you're called to the marketplace, you need to know what you're going to do out there. If you're called to be a dentist, you need to know that. If you're, and not you specifically right now, the, those things will unfold in the future. But I think what's so, so like, cause it alarmed her. She was kind of like taken back. Like, that's not good enough, bro. You're called to get a business degree. And what? What kind of business? Finance? Do you like math? No, not math. Okay. You need to go pray. Bye. See you later. You got to put some more prayer on that. Right? Well, that's not like a fun conversation. But I can't check the box off of that because years ahead of her in life, I know what a general d business degree means. Not a lot, right? So you, you gotta be specific. That's a real big, 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 big world out there. You wanna know what he's told you to do so you can get in there and leave your mark. If you're unwilling to let your leaders in your life right now when you have a bad attitude and you have a crush and you're lying and hiding, that doesn't look well for you as you get older. 
Now you can always reroute and humble yourself, but just walk the path now and you'll save yourself all of those wrong turns. Does that make sense? Yeah, Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, like it's like, let's say you're going to a destination and I want to tell you the address, but you're like, no, I got it. It's in Texas. I, I know where that is. So, so you start heading, you know, I mean, you head east, you're eventually going to be in Texas. But depending on which way you go and how far you go, you could miss it by a long, 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 long way. Why? Because you didn't, you didn't take the time to get the details, yeah. right? You can't just say, because a lot of times what happens is people, they'll get some generality that they feel comfortable with yeah. in their conscience. You know what? Like, I, okay, luck, I, luck, I can luck. see myself going to college. Okay, that's great. <laughs> okay. But you could waste a lot of money and end up with a degree yeah. that nobody cares about and get out of school and like nobody wants to hire you for whatever your whack degree is. <laughs> and now it's like you're just trying to get a job. Why? So you can pay off your student loan. You understand? And, and that's not to make uh, fun of that or, or to say that those things are important. Is. Like if God's called you to be a, a dentist or a doctor, you have to be legally licensed. Thank God for the United States of America where we have different requirements, right? There's certain things in life where if you're going to be an architect, you got to go to school for a long time to know you actually know how to do things yeah. in a safe way. Does that make sense? So for you guys, you need to sometimes just slow down and say, okay, I think my flesh is comfortable with this generality, yeah. but I know that I need to be intentional about my destination. Otherwise I could miss it. Right. Right. Let's say we're having an amazing, wonderful dinner at a phenomenal steakhouse at a certain location in Dallas. And I want to tell you where it is, but you don't listen. And so you miss it. Right? You drive all over the city just looking yeah. for signs. I mean, there's so many streets in Dallas, you could literally never find it. Yeah. And you could miss out on the wonderful, amazing dinner and the great time of fellowship. And we all laughed and we told stories and we had so much fun and the dessert was amazing. And you missed it. Why? Yeah. Because you didn't get the details. Right. Well, isn't so that, that like, like, I got it. Like, I, I'll oh yeah, I got, I got I figure, it. Like, you I know, got like, it. I don't need, I think the enemy will do that. Like, I remember when we were in Bible school and we were just, um, we had just met not very long and it was like we were in a season where we didn't know what we were going to do. And really, until you know what you're going to do, you really don't need to hook up with somebody else. Do you know what I mean? Like you kind of need to know what you're doing with your life before you, that's like step two is like a life partner if you don't even know where you're going. And so we had kind of talked and it was like kind of obvious, you know, we'd be in big groups that like Greg had it like really bad for me and then I had it like really Truth. bad for him. And so, you know what one of the first things he did was? make an appointment with his pastor. Okay. He didn't hit me up. He didn't ask me for nudes. We didn't have those back then. Cause literally this is like people's first step. It's weird. Okay. He didn't like private message me. You know what I mean? There was no, th there was nothing done in the shade. That's what There's people no do today. A lot of people, him. they don't even like a guy come to a girl and have a conversation and like ask her on a date. They're like private message her. Anybody never, can and do they've that. They've never talked to her in their life. Anybody so can ghetto. do that. You have all the time in the world to figure out what to say and to prepare a response. But when you put someone face to face, that's a whole different ballgame. Amen. We do life face to face. Amen. Do you know what I mean? Not behind a device. So he sat down with Pastor Watts. And what did Pastor Watts say? This is what you need to focus on. Do this and this and this and this. And so that's what he did, right? It wasn't the time to hook up. It wasn't the time to even start dating. Why? Because we had a long run and there was a plan for that run and it had a final destination, which if we don't run right, who's sitting right here right now? Not us, right? So people are tied to your obedience. But if you're like, oh, I like her so much. She's so fun. It's like, she's like a bad person. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like she, so you can't be shallow. You can't be shallow with your life and like all casual with your life. Like it's all fun and games. It's not fun and games. Right. I mean, y'all just played some cool games right. and I like games, but like life isn't something to be played with that way. Does that make sense? And so we kind of spent a long time on number one. We'll go faster through the rest of them. If you don't show them what's hidden, it will only be a matter of time and then good riddance. You know, I had young people years and years. We've been in youth ministry for a long time. Like they just always acted like everything was good. And guess what? I'm going to take your word for it. Right. I'm not going to follow you to find out. Oh, 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 Lord wait, Jesus. what? Oh, Lord Jesus. No, it's not happening. I'm not going to do it. So you have to be vulnerable. You have to say, Hey, I'm really kind of struggling in this area. Help me out. Like this happened in my childhood. You know, I'm concerned about this. We'll talk about it. We'll fix it. There's nothing that you're facing. There's nothing that you've done that the blood of Jesus cannot overcome. 
but you have to open up. You have to be honest. And that's what Proverbs 28, 13 says, write it down. A man who confesses his fault will find mercy, help, forgiveness. You got to get it out. Number two, we're all in this, what? Together. What that means is, is successful Christianity happens in the local church. That's God's plan. So you have to be connected. You have to know what your church is and you have to plant there. And even if you're not there forever, where you are, we've only been a part of three churches combined, his dad's church, my dad's church, and Rama. So when we left here, we hooked up with that church. We served in that church. And then we listened for God's voice. He called us here. So then we hook up and we serve. But successful Christianity doesn't happen outside of the church. That's out of order. It has to be in a church. So you will never get anywhere by yourself and competition and insecurity will keep you from being who God made you to be. You know, there's so many reasons why people devalue the local church. They don't want to be submitted. They don't, they don't, they think it's boring. Like it doesn't matter. You have to know for yourself and you've probably seen it in your family, how important and how powerful church really is. So give me some thoughts about this we're all in this together does anybody have any church life ways that church has changed your life reasons why you feel like people don't come to church or get connected in church anything church related you're on a talk show now we're asking you i feel like there's a reason that a lot of people don't like coming to church and it's that the world sets a stereotype oh snap (laughs) you went deep with that so people are just too scared to tap in because there's already a stereotype of what we are. Wow. That's really good. That's really good. It's really good. They don't believe about church. Yeah. They don't understand what it's about. Yeah. That's good. Okay, who else? They're too f- focused on like what the world like what the world does and not like what other like what we do. Yeah. 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 It's good. And I because they don't want to be held accountable accountable oh. with things. Good it's a really answer. good one. They don't want to be held accountable. That's I feel great. like, honestly, it's like about trend wise because yeah. our generation is so like flaky and like yeah. just goes with like what's trendy at the moment. Yeah. So, like, right now, for example, it's like doing like crystals and like all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So, if it's not like in, yeah. if someone cool isn't doing it, like how you're talking about like where you go, like you'll follow. Like, right. if someone like influencers like that aren't doing it, right. yeah. it's not going to be like a big deal. Right. Yeah. That's a good answer. Okay. Tell me, tell me about crystals. Okay. okay Praise cool. the Lord. Okay, pray. Okay, Jaslyn, whenever Jen, Jen is done. Oh, crystals, like a bunch of them. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> apparently, a bunch of them are supposed to bring, like, peace and joy. So, really, like, if you have, like, oh. rose quartz or, I don't know, there's this one hippie store in, like, <laughs> at, like, the mall in Lubbock, and they have a bunch of those crystals and, like, those 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 fortune telling yeah 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 oh you've just given wow. me material for like, wow. like yeah. Yeah. i just want jonathan shuttlesworth to do what, what were you gonna crystals. say kind he of has less fear of man than me like we don't have fear of man i don't have fear of man but i'm just saying like I he has a little bit I less fear god i don't fear no man <laughs> okay okay crystal okay thank you because it's like it's demonic okay cool yeah. that's what i thought were you gonna add to that They think like this crystal will bring me joy. Like if I like Wait, people wear it. Wait, are they? It, they're holding the crystal. Or no, they. Well, some people <laughs> is have it on a lollipop like a stick <laughs> or. They some people the have it on a necklace and they just like a necklace. wear it. Yeah. So it's with them. Mm-hmm. Oh. The crystal that's with them on their necklace gives them peace. Yes, or whatever that certain crystal is. Oh yeah. Does it yeah, work yeah. in your pocket? Just kidding. We know it doesn't work, y'all. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, I got it. Listen, your generation. <laughs> will not be lost. You guys are going to reach them. You yes, guys are going to tell them, hey, bro, that crystal on your neck ain't doing you no good. Okay? You want some peace? You better get in touch with the Prince of Peace. His name is yeah. Jesus. So peace good. comes no other way. Amen? Are Thanks you guys bold enough to out. say that to your friends? Yeah, I know. I'm so glad you guys shared that with us. Because honestly, somebody had told me about that. Like, they had kind of, like, hit me up. Like, I think so-and-so is, like, doing crystals. And I'm like, what? Right? As we fast don't do as, crystals. We wear crystals. Yeah, what as fast is going as on things with the change, crystals? 
it's easy to be、yeah. out of touch, but it's like, listen, the word's still the answer. It really doesn't it matter what the world's next big thing is. Well, and do you guys know that everything is about Jesus? It's all about Jesus. And the enemy's such a counterfeiter. So he takes everything the word of God says. If the word of God says Jesus is peace,、right. Satan's like, ooh, I'll convince people that this is peace. So、this、they won't、crystal. serve him. They'll serve this crystal. Or, do you know what I mean? Like, everything's about Jesus. And so when you know him, you should. Delight in that、yes. and be bold about that. Yes. Right? Because other people don't know that. All right. Are we good on all, this, all in、go. this together? Let's do number three. Success is spelled. How is success spelled? S, you just. Loving God with all your heart. 1 Corinthians 13 8 says, Love never fails. And God is love. So success is spelled God, who is love. Love is not a feeling, it's a person. Right. That's why when people are like, I love you, and it's like, no, you don't. You lust them. You're right. Preach、no. that, Pastor Charity. You don't love them. Come on. Call it like it is. Call it like it is. You just want them. You just just like、them. on cars. She wants me for、She、my body. She wants me for my body when Tell Mater said that. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember Tell Mater? Y'all. Okay, good. Finally, I connect with you guys, a movie that's from your、it's、generation. It's fine. Until you make him your priority, you will never experience success. So, talk to me about what the word says success is versus what the world says success is. Go. You're on your talk show. Cadence? We'll try to get people that haven't already said if, they are, if their hands are up. Okay, so I would say like the world's success is like how much money you make、yeah. and just like what you're doing is like、um, profitable. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay, Jenna? So, like, a lot of times people think success is. Success, yes, that、mm-hmm. word. Yes.、Um, that you have to go to college and stuff、yeah. to be successful.、Yeah. And it's, it's not true. Yeah,、right. it's so not That's true. That's a good answer. If he tells you to, you can. That's right. But Jenna's,、um, yeah, you don't have to. Great answer. I、answer. won't tell your story, it's yours, but yeah. I wanted to. Like, how far you get in life or how, like, where you get your name out there.、Mm-hmm. Like, if your name is out there. You know what? I am going to tell him. Jenna's parents、um, have. Um, several successful businesses. Her dad was voted least likely to succeed、right. in, in high school. Least likely to succeed, right? But when you will connect with God, when you will honor God's word, right? He can do things for you that nobody else can do for you, right? And I hope that's okay that I shared that because I, I、yeah. love your parents. Like, that's, that's what you're、testimony. trying to say. It、like、is. He, it's incredible. He kind of, I think he kind of delights in it because、yeah. the Lord has blessed him、exactly. so much. He honors it, God. And it's like the world has no clue. They don't. You guys do not allow the world to label mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. The world cannot define block, you. Block, 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 block. Just block it. Okay, who else, Jackson? And、uh, then, like, somebody over here needs to say something for Jesus. Say something for Jesus in this section. Technically,、guys. they have one extra chair because this is like、What? five, 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 and this is only、But、four, still. four, four, four. But still. Somebody over、Come、here needs on, to say、it. something for Jesus. Bring it. We need some. some. But I think the、um, world success is like sex, drugs.、Um, so true. Getting pregnant in your teenage years. Yeah.、Right. And、um, dying early. I'm telling you. <laughs> right. Like, we did、yeah. it. We've arrived. Success. <laughs> we made a baby. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Good answer, Jackson. You are awesome.、Man. Y'all, I will never forget. Y'all, this is serious. This is serious because I love you. I will never forget the first appointment that I had with a young adult、yep. who had used that next day thing that you can buy at Walmart. Do you know what that is? When you didn't use protection, you take this and it'll kill the baby. Okay? Those are not fun appointments. Those are not fun appointments. Especially because she's in tears and he was the one that rushed to Walmart to get it. That's not fun. Right? And I'm looking at this person, I'm like, listen, girl, we already went through this. We told you not to be doing this a long time ago. And now look at this brokenness.、Right. Because you thought success was sex, drugs, getting pregnant. Dying early. That's, I mean, we're laughing and we need to stop, honestly. <laughs> But it's low key kind of funny because that is literally the destination and that's how it's painted. So let's let this section just wrap this, this number three up Bring it all right、together. here. Bring Say it all something、together. for Jesus, somebody over here. The world's definition of success versus what the, wor- the word says is success. Mary Bell. Yeah, let's go. 
Let's All go. Righty, I then. knew your mind was percolating. You got this, girl. Maybe by your um, the objects you have. Yeah, yep. so the great. house yep. or the car yeah, yeah, yeah. or anything. Yeah. yeah, great answer. So good. See? So good. Success. Oh, look at that. She sparked another ooh, one. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> um, like actors, like having a big name, mm-hmm. like fame. Fame. Yeah. Good answer. Jennifer. Yes. Jennifer. What is it? Benifer. Benifer. <laughs> Jelena. Y'all, I want them to get saved. Like, I don't want people to go to hell. If you don't have anything to flex over, then nobody really likes you that Ooh, much. Yeah. Nice. Like That's the lingo. Good. Flexing. When I was y'all's age, I had nothing flexing to flex over. And I didn't even right care. Babe. I didn't even care. It was like, I have red hair. I have braces. I have you, glasses. Flexing. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> I got to go. Number four, running. First Corinthians 14. Are you leaving? Oh. Okay, bye. I'm over it. I'm over it. We got to get back to Jesus here. Let's just move that out of the way. All right. First Corinthians 14, one says, pursue love. Pursue means to follow in an effort to overtake or capture, to chase. I have this old school worship song on my phone and it's literally called running, but it's not the Hillsong one. It's so good. And really, we're not running in a, in a way that means like we're chasing God. Because if he was running from us, how would we ever catch him? I mean, he's God. But what it means is all my passions, all my energies are going for his things. All that I have. So that, that's, that's what the next couple of blanks are. Where is your energy? Where is your passion? Where are your conversations? Like, what are you talking about? Where's your money? The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. That's what you are pursuing. And so right now, when you have such a flexible schedule and you don't have the requirements that you have as you continue to mature, you really decide what your priorities are. Church is a priority. Spending time with God every day is a priority. You know, if you wanna be a leader and you really wanna make a difference, leaders are readers. So you have to read. And I don't mean like, the titles of videos on YouTube. I mean, you have to actually read a book. If you wanna be everything God's made you to be, that's gonna require that you do more than people who aren't doing anything and are just living a life based on pleasures. Most young people your age think more about having fun than being successful. Successful in the kingdom is about being a student of the word right now, being a disciple, being a learner. Somebody talk to me about um, where your energy or your passion is or where your generation's passion or energy is. You can bust yourself out. You can bust your generation out. You can tell me one thing you want to change about your passions or what you're pursuing. Hands in the air. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of my friends, they just, that's all they do is take talk. Like, I know that's a big stereotype and stuff like that, but... I mean, it's, it's kind of bad. Do y'all ever get like tired of like staring at your phone all day? Odd city? Yeah, you ain't got y'all's phones in the co-op. Uh, Hallelujah. So like a lot of my friends, friends uh, are trying to like pass the school year without getting like caught like cheating or whatever. Like they're yeah. just trying to get through it to finish yeah. it. Yeah. They're not trying to finish strong. They're just trying to finish right. it. What is TikTok? Oh, it's like, um, it's you, you just put video, you just put it's like videos on there. Like, just put. What is it? It's like, you just put videos of stuff that, that are real, but are not real. They just create it. Yeah, they make it yourself. Yeah. So it's just another app. Yeah. It started with dance mainly. Like literally, like this is my quiet time. Lord, I know you called me for such a time as this, in this hour of time. But Lord, why couldn't I have been called in the 50s when there were just hula skirts and grease lightning people like in the movie, not weird things I don't like, like TikTok and other crystals and stuff. I don't understand. <laughs> like, seriously, like, help us as you're out here. Get your light together in this world and bring people to church. Like, let it be real enough to you because I can't change your culture. I already had my run. 
I can help you change yours though. Okay, so TikTok, that's a big one. Cheating, just like survival, not really thriving. Okay, this section over here, anybody? What are people pursuing? Where's their energy going? Ryan, no, okay, no, yeah. The only thing they chase after in life is likes on TikTok. That's great, that is powerful. Likes, followers. Themselves, themselves. Yeah, themselves. They're pursuing themselves, everything they want. Hey, is church over? Okay, I just feel like it was loud out there, but it was probably Kid City. Okay, perfect. Relationships? Yeah, they're pursuing relationships, yeah. Um, they're trying to be, like, pursuing, like, um, just basically fame. And, like, yeah. like, they're trying to be, like, so popular, and then so they'll be like, oh, yeah, so then, like, this person, they'll like me. And then, like, yeah. they're just trying to, like, just trying to get all of these worldly things that in – to be honest, you really don't need until yeah. like way later in your life. Yeah, that's good. Okay. And I am? Objects, things. Possessions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what they're pursuing. Mm -hmm. What I was thinking is like, um, like when I had friends like in elementary school, they used to have real fun with me, but when they got in middle school, they did like stuff that was not right. Yeah. The most thing ever. Yeah. Things change. Their passions change. They start pursuing things that, well, it's kind of like if you're 13 or let's even go younger because what, how old do y'all have to be to get your license? 16? Okay. We got ours when we were 15. No, I'm not talking permit y'all. I'm talking about the whole thing. 15, 15 years old. I was driving. Not a good idea. Anyways. Okay. Let's say you're six years old. You probably don't want your car when you're six, right? Because even if it's a brand new car, let's say it's a brand new car and your parents are like, you're six years old, we're buying you a car. You're like, what? Because by the time you can drive it, nine years later, is that right? Did I do the math right? Yeah. Okay, I should have just worked as numbers I know. <laughs> Five. Five plus <laughs> Anyways, it's 10. Is it 10? If you're six years old and you can't drive until you're 15, that's nine. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're close enough. Listen, we, we're close enough. It, it, the car's old. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what goes on in my mind when you like want to date right now. It's like, dude, by the time you're old enough to get married, that whole thing's old. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you doing that in this season? That's like getting a car when you're in elementary school. Like, just wait. Yeah, they look good now. But wait till you see them later. Y'all never forget the only crush I had in high school. And I just gave it to the Lord and it went away. Thank God. So I'm in my office working and it's like this person comes in, they're doing work for like one of the pieces of equipment, like in the church. And my sister was like, dude, there's so so out there. I was like, oh, I'm not going out there. I'm not going out there. And so I just like low key, like, and I'm like, Oh my God, like it hasn't even been that long. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, things did not go up for you. They went down like fast. And like, and, and like, I'm just like so grateful. Do you know what I mean? Like you don't know everything that you know right now. Just give yourself some years. Like don't, don't try to rush things that the world's rushing because that will bring regret. Re rush and regret always go together, right? Whether you're just buying something or, you know, and that's one thing that I've learned from Pastor Greg, um, you know, just don't rush into it. Just wait. Just wait. Anything that the world's saying you got to do fast is actually better slow. You can't build healthy fast. You got to build healthy slow. Show me your friends. You guys know this verse, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. So why do you hang out with the people that you hang out with? You have to ask yourself that. Well, because they, maybe it's just because they liked you back. Dude, I don't care. You should like me. I'm awesome. But that doesn't mean I'm going to hang out with you. Do you know what I mean? That's desperate. What do you believe you are called to be when you grow up? You know, when I was y'all's age, during the summer, I wasn't always at the church. I wasn't required to be down here. But there were some times that I would come down here. And a lot of the things I know how to do, I learned when I was y'all's age literally. 
there was a lady that worked in the office and she was genius. She was such a good administrator. And so I spent time with her. Like, honestly, like, I, I love you. I love you guys so much. And I'm gonna tell you the truth straight up. Some of you, like, you're not good at anything. That matters. Yeah. Video games don't count. Like, you're not good at anything. Do you know, I'm, I love you. Like, you're not good at school. You don't know how to do anything. You're not, you don't know how to cook. You don't, you're not good at anything. When are you gonna get good at something? Yeah. And how do you think you get good at something? You hang around somebody that's already good at it. Like you're not old enough to work. You should be apprenticing somewhere. You should be talking to somebody that's like, hey, I think I'm headed in this direction. This is what I'm, this is what I'm interested in. Tell me, what do I need to read? What do I need to watch? You know, people are like, I want Pastor Greg to sit down with me and play, like help me with the guitar. You need to sit at your house and get a guitar book and learn the guitar. Do you know what I'm saying? Like you just want the attention. You just, what are you doing? And then get to that place where you can have an apprentice. And like, do you know what I'm saying? Like literally, I want you guys to be good at life right now. You don't have to wait. I started teaching kids or speaking like this when I was in fifth grade. That was younger than all of you guys. You don't just all of a sudden like get good at stuff. You have to practice. Like you said, and I, you have to be around other people that are good at that same thing, right? Because what you're practicing right now is what you're good at. Like some of you guys are gamers, but it's because you practiced. So you wanna, you wanna decide, right? What does friend mean to you? First of all, someone with whom you would give your life. That doesn't mean that you would literally die for, even though we saw that depicted in the movies we watched on Wednesday. It just means your time. There's a lot of young people that I've given my life to because I've given my time to them and I didn't get anything in return from them. And some of them I got like a slap in the face. Someone you can follow. You need a friend that you can follow. I think we, we don't define friend correctly. It's like, who are you following? If someone were to ask you, hey, who are you looking up to right now? And you're like, no one, I don't need anyone. Okay, great. Someone that you share your life with and your purpose with, that's somebody that's beside you. Guys, you can't hold each other accountable. You're in the same season. Do you know what I'm saying? Like if you're trying to keep your head above water, that's not a good time to help your friend not drown. And that's where you are. You're all, you're all in the same season. So you need somebody above you. You need to be able to be an example that the little kids can look to. And then you need somebody beside you that you can enjoy things with, that you can share things with. Last statement, remember we looked at it um, in, the, in the scene from um, Pearl Harbor. Laying out cover fire isn't the same as covering. Unfortunately, so many young people have defined like a good friendship as someone who knows all my secrets and keeps them. I give anybody in my, in my life the right to expose any secret in my life that needs to be exposed because I don't want to, I don't want sins in my life to stay secrets. You know why? Because I'll keep sinning, right? So laying out cover fire, let me just teach you. This is why I tell interns. This is why I tell varsity students. You got 24 hours. Somebody drops a bomb on you, whether it's I'm sneaking around, I'm hiding. You got 24 hours to tell your parents or I will. You can't just throw around, I feel like killing myself. You can't throw that around. Because the moment you charge the atmosphere with those words, you've just made that person accountable for it. And so you tell them, listen, I don't know if it's because you don't have the crystal or what, but like you got 24 hours to tell somebody or I will. You're sneaking around, you're hiding, you made out with so-and-so and you weren't supposed to, whatever. You got 24 hours to sell somebody or I will. Guys, that's how we're supposed to treat the church, right? We're supposed, not in a judgmental way, but like it's our job to keep the devil out. And if he's trying to get up close to people that we love through self-deception and sin, we want to get his rear out of here, right? So being a friend takes practice, but you'll only be a good friend to people beside you if you have a good friend above you. Your leaders, your pastors, they're available in that way to you, but you have to accept them and know what that looks like, right?